Next up is Halima, um, Halima Farayola, who I started working with um, three months ago, and uh, she's going to talk about the moon rat itself. Um, and then later on, we'll hear about the Rice University team doing something very similar. Uh, Halima, go ahead and share the screen to yourself, uh, unless you want me to do that. Sure, I'll share the screen. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Halima, uh, and I'm going to start my presentation. So, okay, so I'm Halima. I'm a recent graduate from NYU. I studied electrical engineering, and I've been uh, volunteering on the Moonrat project since August 2020. Um, so, I wanted to ask do you see my Zoom screen? <laughs> uh, we're, we're seeing your slide, not your Zoom screen. So, it looks okay. good. Okay. Uh, so basically, a moon rat is a portable. Sorry. Moon rat is a portable incubator. Um, it's small. It's powered by battery, and um, it tests for E. coli in water. Um, as Chris spoke about, the idea is to um, test for water in uh, communities that don't have access to sophisticated lab equipment. So uh, this is something that a layman, can, a layperson can uh, test for by, you know, getting water samples and putting them on the, on the pads. Um, and all, all the inc incubator does is keep the um, water samples at the ideal temperature, which is uh, about body temperature in order to incubate the E. coli uh, sample. So if there's E. coli present in the water, uh, it will be visible after 48 hours. Um, so this is the general structure of the um, moon rat. It has changed a little bit, but the idea is to have some kind of battery. It doesn't have to be a solar panel, but we're thinking of renewable energy, um, ideally. Um, and then we have basically the container that um, has some some of the water samples, which will be on a Petri film. Um, there will be a heating pad to heat up the uh, Petri film to be at the right uh, temperature. Now that uh, heating pad has to be to sense the current temperature of the, of the environment and adjust its uh, heat supply to keep the uh, E. coli at the ideal temperature so it doesn't burn or it doesn't remain kind of uh, dormant for lack of a better term. So that's achieved by having an Arduino that is connected to a temperature sensor and the Arduino gets the temperature sensor, sorry, gets the current temperature from the temperature sensor. Um, when the temperature is below ideal temperature, it turns on the heating pad for the right amount of time until the, the uh, temperature is high enough. Now we don't have any, uh, any way of reducing the current temperature, but we assume that since 95 degrees Fahrenheit is a very high temperature, it would probably never get as um, high as that. And um, Robin and I have been discussing the possibility of having any cooling system, but uh, he says that cooling is something that's very complicated to do in a small um, container like this. So uh, this just shows the general circuit of um, our incubator. So the Arduino is in the center controlling the different peripherals. Um, so we have some buttons. The buttons are supposed to control our OLED screen. The OLED screen is basically just there for um, whoever is getting this water samples to have some interesting data. It tells you, you know, it allows you to select what, what the ideal uh, temperature is. This is um, so that the project is actually customizable. So in the future, we might be testing for things other than E. coli. So you're able to um, change what the ideal temperature is. Then you can, we have a few graphs that shows you the temperature over time. Um, and this just allows you, um, this alerts the person growing the samples if there was any spikes that might have killed off the E. coli, bacteria, or anything like that. Um, then we have uh, the temperature sensor here, uh, and that's connected to a transistor 
and the transistor is just there so it can turn on and off the um, heating pad. And these are our uh, components. Uh, these components are easy, easily accessible. So the open source nature of this project means that you know, other people can adopt the project. They don't have to get um, a complete you know, design from us. They can just use the circuit we have and the code we have and start building on that. And uh, as you're gonna hear, the Moonrat team had, is doing something similar. So it shows the success of you know, our, our project so far. Um, so we're collaborating. Uh, every Monday we meet, we speak about um, some of the progress we've made. We use GitHub to submit our code samples and basically when I started this project, I was, um, Sam was the person, my predecessor. Um, I started working on the projects he had, uh, on the code he had uh, began, but we were work working simultaneously and GitHub allowed us to, you know, work on code independently, submit it together and, you know, compare and contrast. We can merge the, the code together or we can choose uh, what branches are best. We're also using OpenSCAD to design the box, um, basically the container for the incubator. Because we have limited hardware for now, we, uh, we're working on the second gen of the product. So only Sam and I have the hardware. Um, sharing our code on GitHub allows someone like Rob to review the progress we've made without having the hardware present. So current result, this is basically what our circuit looks like. This is actually SAM circuit. Mine is a little bit more jumbled. Um, so this is the OLED screen. And basically when it's turned on, we have some menu options. The interesting menu options actually are the two graphs. One graph plots the temperature over um, about uh, two hours. So it just shows you how, um, what the temperatures have been over two hours time. Um, for our, for the uh, E. coli purposes, we need about 48 hours of uh, incubation. So we'll have five minute intervals on the, on the OLED screen. Then there's a second graph that shows you the temperature over 48 hours or as long as you've been incubating. So that just shows you if there's been any crazy spikes that you should be aware of to, to tell you if your you know, E. coli um, incubation is accurate. Um, so I'm gonna play the, the videos that I have right now. They're a little blurry. Um, so this first one shows you the graph over the last two hours. So I'm just gonna show you the, the latter part of the, of the graph. So we basically just have the current temperature uh, sorry, the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature, uh, that's changed dynamically so that um, you can have a very zoomed in graph or if there's a wide uh, deviation between the max and min temperature, then it, uh, it shows a more, a smaller graph. So as you can see, the graph moves and this is basically the last uh, few samples of the of the temperature that's being sensed. So this is important for um, looking at the detailed temperature uh, readings. And then the second graph, the second graph shows you uh, the temperature as long as you have been incubating. So it starts here. Um, it's pretty long since I wanted to show a lot of time passing. This line here is actually not a temperature drop. It's just something wonky that I haven't figured out yet. But basically it's supposed to draw a line from the maximum temperature to the minimum temperature. Um, and it keeps changing and it shows you just as long as it's been plotting. Okay.
So those are the current results we have in terms of um, our circuit and our code. So this is like a second generation of the, um, of the design. We, we intend after, you know, we, we need this breadboard to, to create our code uh, that works. We have a, a working code right now, but we will be optimizing the code just to use as little memory as possible and have, you know, a low run time. Now, after doing that, we also need to design a printed, printed circuit board that allows you to have a more like a sturdy uh, connection rather than having all these wires together. So that's uh, what we need to do. Code optimization, I forgot to put, um, create a, a PCB here and design an OpenSCAD uh, case. So this is what Robert and I have been working on. Actually, OpenSCAD is something I've never used. So you know, one of the benefits of, of volunteering is that you're gonna learn some new technology. Um, so we were working on this case. Now, Robert decided that actually he wanted us to use uh, like a vacuum uh, flask, which it, because it's just a lot easier, uh, possibly um, because it's easier to get a vacuum flask than uh, 3D printing an open scale design. Uh, but this was just the idea that we we were uh, working on before. So this is where the OLED screen goes, the buttons, and this is where you're gonna put the, the E.coli samples, the Petri films, the heating pad will be in here in order to heat the, um, heat the samples. Uh, a lot of what we're gonna be thinking of is how thick the case needs to be in order to have, to heat the samples for 48 hours without um, exhausting the battery life. And then, like I said, code optimization is um, just to make sure the runtime is uh, the runtime is uh, as little as possible, and that we're we're um, utilizing the Arduino's memory efficiently. And then, in co conclusion, uh, uh, I this is uh, the mini incubator is something that you know I've never thought about, but it just allows remote communities to test their water efficiently. Um, some, just any random person can easily uh, download this code onto an Arduino and run these tests without knowing any programming. Uh, we're trying to make the graph as, you know, comprehensive as possible so that just by looking at it, you know, um, you have the data in order to know if your incubation was successful or not. This is easily adoptable and it shows the beauty of open source development because you know anyone can actually just take our code and um, our circuit and all of that and start working on it, either develop or just use it as is um, with, with some uh, easily accessible materials and not too much uh, need for technical knowledge. Um, and this allows me to collaborate with both experience and, you know, early career engineers like myself um, and you know, have some semblance of what it is to be in the, uh, in the you know, work field, I guess. Uh, you know, looking at deadlines and uh, communicating your work efficiently and all of that. So yeah, it's been a great time working on the Moonrat project and I'm looking forward to, you know, more iterations of our design. Thank okay, you. thank you. Let's hear it for Halima. Um, I'm afraid we have gotten a, a little behind time. Uh, thank you, Halima. Um, I'm gonna cut the strategy session. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play the fuller game on the five projects that you just saw. We're only gonna take five minutes. So I'd like to be back here by 1243 please. And then I'm going to um, accelerate the Rice University team's helpful engineering, OSMS, and Cosmic coming up, and we may cut some other sections. Uh, so um, when we come back at 1243, can the um, Rice EcoPot team be ready to go, please?